Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Adelina and I make videos about living in my tiny house on wheels and living a more intentional life. Today I wanna to talk about how to decide on the size of your tiny house. Some questions to ask yourself when you are deciding on what size of tiny house to build or buy that might help you make that decision. Some considerations, just some things that I thought about when I was deciding on what size my tiny house should be. So I think the first and probably the most obvious question to ask yourself is, how many people are gonna be living in that tiny house? Will it just be you or do you have a partner, a spouse, a partner, or do you have a family with children? Just how many people are living in this tiny house? You need to know how many bedrooms you need to build in or sleeping spaces that you need. That's the number one consideration that you should have in your mind when you're deciding about what size tiny house you're going to build or buy. Obviously, if it's just you, then you know you can choose whatever size you want. You can go as small as you want because you just have to think about you. But if you have a partner, and especially if you have children, then um, that question it becomes obviously so much more important. When you have kids in a tiny house, privacy is gonna be your number one concern privacy for you as a parent um, and as a couple and privacy for the kids as well because everybody needs their own space, a space that they can call their own where their things can be um, that is somewhat private and sort of um, theirs. I think that's really important and something to think about and actually talk to your partner or your family about um, so that you have a really good understanding of what their idea of personal space is uh, and how that matches up with your idea of personal space and how much privacy and sort of their own space everybody needs so that you can factor that into your tiny house design. I think that's really important. The next question to ask yourself kind of goes along with the first one and that is how are you using this tiny house? Is this going to be a vacation home some uh, a, a tiny house that you build and put on a you know vacation lot that you have because obviously the needs for that tiny house will be different than if it's your permanent residence this is my permanent home i sold my townhouse in order to build this so for me everything i own has to fit into this space and it needs to work for me 365 days a year 24 hours a day uh, for all my needs and that would be different if I was just building a vacation sort of a holiday space I will obviously wouldn't need room for everything that I had I wouldn't need necessarily uh, a workspace I wouldn't need as big a kitchen those sorts of things would be different if I was building a house that was a temporary uh, part-time residence versus a full-time home where everything needs to be there and it needs to function for every season, for every need. Some of us might think to build a tiny house that starts off as a holiday place or a vacation place that you end up wanting to live in full time down the road. Maybe when you retire or you decide that you just wanna downsize. If that is at all a possibility, then make sure that you're planning for that when you're designing your house um, to build or to buy. When you're thinking about how you're gonna use this house, is this gonna be your permanent residence? Uh, is it going to be long-term? That's another thing that you need to think about. Is this something that you're going to have forever? Or is this a transition home? I don't know, like let's say the scenario where you've bought some land and you plan on building a big home, a foundation home on it. But for now, you've got your tiny house. But eventually you're gonna to move to uh, a, a different space. That may inform how you build a little bit differently. To go along with that, think about any current and or future possible mobility issues. You know, if you are young, then crawling into a loft for a bed might not be an issue right now. Um, right now at 55, I can crawl into my loft no problem. And if I had my bedroom up there, it wouldn't be a uh, big problem for me. Mobility wise, I can handle the stairs to my 
bedroom on the gooseneck. But if you have mobility issues now, uh, or if you are anticipating that maybe down the road you might have them, then having a main floor bedroom will be a priority for you. And that is something that you obviously want to factor in when you're designing your tiny house because to retrofit is going to be, if not impossible, then very difficult and definitely expensive. I didn't want to crawl up a ladder to get into a loft and I didn't want to be on my hands and knees to make a bed, which was another reason that I have a bedroom I can stand in and walk around the bed uh, to make it. So. Mobility issues are definitely something to think about for yourself or your partner, any family members, uh, because that will definitely inform how you design your tiny house and the size of your tiny house. Because if you're going to have a main floor bedroom, um, then you might need a slightly longer tiny house. So another thing that you want to think about when you're designing your tiny house, when you're deciding how big of a tiny house to build is how much stuff do you have? It's easy when you're first dreaming about your tiny house to think about uh, how minimalist you can be and you're gonna get rid of all of your stuff. And certainly when you're planning on living in a tiny house of any size, you have to downsize the number, the amount of things that you own because you simply cannot fit everything into a tiny house. However, uh, be realistic about <laughs> how much you can get rid of, how much you're willing to get rid of. Uh, think about things that will come with you that are important such as you know I have a sewing machine that was important to me to have in my tiny house you might have tools you might have craft supplies things that are important for you to bring into the tiny house you you have to make room for and therefore will uh, impact the size of your tiny house be realistic about what you're going to bring into that tiny house so that you can plan for it have a place for it so that everything isn't out you know it's really important in a small space to minimize clutter and to have a space to put things away um, because otherwise your tiny house is going to feel very crowded very cluttered and not very peaceful so yeah think about how much stuff you're going to bring into the tiny house be realistic about how many things you're going to get rid of it, there's not a right or wrong answer to that it's whatever your answer is then you you design uh, for that and you build the size of house that works for you some other questions to ask yourself when you're deciding on the size of your tiny house um, ask yourself do you need a permanent workspace a standalone permanent workspace do you or gaming station or study space craft space something like that because um, if those things those activities are important to you or are priority to you or necessity as in work doing that on your kitchen counter or you're sitting in your living room is going to not be efficient it won't be comfortable and it will impact your space uh, you'll always be having to eat, to take things out and put things away or they'll more likely the things will just get left out and therefore again the space gets really cluttered and um, just not very a not very peaceful space for me when I was building my tiny house when I was designing my tiny house and deciding on the space uh, the size of tiny house I wanted one of the things I knew I wanted was a priority for me was a dedicated office space, a place for my files, a place for a printer, and a, a desk space where I could have my monitor, my laptop, my keyboard, and not have to put it away at the end of every night during the week, um, and not having it on my kitchen counter where everything was cluttered. I wanted my kitchen for cooking and eating and my office space for work. Um, and so that's why I went, I went nine and a half feet wide versus the eight and a half that is standard. Eight, eight and a half is the um, normal width for a tiny house. And eight and a half, at least in Canada, is the width that's street legal without a permit. If you want to go wider, you need a wide load permit. Now, at nine and a half feet wide, uh, she doesn't need guide cars or anything like that. But I do need a wide load permit and it does need to have the, the I think it's 
W or D, whatever that is, banner, sticker on the back of it when it's being moved. The wide load permit from what I remember was around $400. So it's expensive. It's definitely uh, something that you want to think about if you plan on moving your house a lot. And we'll talk about that in a second. But it was important to me because again, this is my permanent house. This is the, the only home that I own. Um, and I am a teleworker. I work from home full time. And so I needed a space where I could have my uh, work life separate from my personal life and at the end of the day I could turn my lap my computer off close my laptop turn the light off and and then forget about work if it was on my kitchen counter if I was doing it here in the living room on my coffee table then um, those two would be too blended and already it's hard enough to separate work and personal life when you're uh, a full-time teleworker not having a dedicated space would make it even harder and definitely I don't think very healthy for my mental health um, and again if you're say you're a big gamer you want to have a setup that's dedicated to that for your gaming for your studying for your work it's important to make decide what your priorities are and make sure that you're designing that into your tiny house and it will impact how big of a tiny house you want, either lengthwise or widthwise, as in my case. Your tiny house needs to function for everything that's a priority for you, as I already said. So if entertaining is a priority for you, if sitting down to meals together with family, with your partner, uh, is a priority for you, then you definitely want to factor that into the size of your tiny house. If it's an a very, very small tiny house, um, you won't have the space for a dedicated eating area. Another question to ask yourself is, um, what size bathroom do I want? Do I want a bathtub or is the shower stall going to be sufficient? Those two things take up different amounts of square footage. Also ask yourself if you need or want a sink in your bathroom. I've seen a lot of tiny houses, small tiny houses that uh, have shower stalls, not tubs, and don't even have a sink in their bathroom just to conserve space. There's just space for a toilet and a shower stall, a little bit of storage. And right outside there is the kitchen sink. There's just a sliding door between the two. It's all about deciding what your priorities are. But know that if you really want a tub, then you need to build a bigger bathroom, which will take space away from other parts of your house. Uh, a big kitchen was a priority. Having a uh, bigger living room area was important to me, but I still wanted a tub. It's not a big tub. It's an RV sized tub and it's, it's not big. I can't like lay in it or anything like that, but I wanted a tub to be able to soak in if I wanted to after a cold day. Um, I wanted to be able to wash a dog. The idea of having a tub was important to me, even though it was a small tub. So that meant my bathroom had to be a certain size. And I made a priority of having that in my tiny house. So I already knew that's what I wanted. And therefore, again, I was going to have to go uh, a certain length. It was never, my house was never going to be 18 feet long, 20 feet long, because I would never have been able to fit the things that I wanted. So decide whether or not a tub is important to you. Decide whether or not a sink was, is important to you in your bathroom because that'll make a big difference in the size of house that you have. To go along with that, <laughs> decide if having in-house laundry is important to you because washing machines, dryers, they take up a lot of space. Now, I have a washer dryer combo unit, a higher washer dryer combo unit, and I really like my unit. However, it doesn't do big loads and it washes a load that's bigger than it will dry. So I hang a lot of my clothes to dry. That's not a, a problem for me. Uh, I had a viewer ask me just the other day whether or not that washer dryer combo unit would wash a queen size comforter. No, absolutely not. So decide whether or not having in-house laundry abilities, facilities is important to you and if yes, decide whether or not a washer dryer combo unit will work for you or you need a separate washer and dryer because you need or want to be able to do bigger loads. Because those things take up a lot of space, 
you need to factor them into your design and they will impact the size of house that you build. I wouldn't do without it because again, this is my permanent home. Um, but when I have big loads, when I'm doing a bunch of sheets and towels at once, certainly if I'm washing my comforter or my duvet, uh, I go to the laundromat. It's fast. It doesn't cost a lot of money. To me, that's zero compromise. I don't mind that at all. But if it matters to you, then know that you're only going to be able to go so small with your tiny house because you need to be able to factor those things in to the size and the design. Another question to ask yourself is how often will the tiny house be moved? Because if you are the kind of person who is planning on actually traveling with your tiny house, um, then obviously the size of the house is really going to impact that. Serendipity is, like I say, 37 feet long, nine and a half feet wide. She's big and she's a triple axle trailer um, built for this size of house. However, it's not an easy thing to move around on a regular basis and certainly it would be an expensive thing to move around, especially since I'm good, I would need a wide load permit to do it. But let's pretend that she was only eight and a half feet wide. At 37 feet long, it's still going to be an expensive thing to move. The gas in moving a house <laughs> this size mm, was going, is going to be a lot. So if you're the kind of person who wants to travel with their tiny house, which I think is awesome, um, obviously you're going to want to go smaller because the smaller the, the house, the lighter the house. If it's your full-time home, but you plan on moving it regularly, like often, then obviously you're gonna wanna keep it as small as you can to make that as efficient as you can. Um, and also make sure that you don't go more than eight and a half feet wide. Transport trucks that you see here in North America are eight and a half feet wide, or they're no more than eight and a half feet wide and they're no more than 13 and a half feet from the road to the highest point. The smaller the house, obviously the easier it is to move, uh, especially when you're moving it, you know, on a regular basis. Which brings me to the last question on my list that you should ask yourself when you're deciding on the size of tiny house that you wanna build. Um, are you moving it yourself? Or are you gonna hire somebody to move it whenever it moves? If you are moving it yourself, you know, how big of and how heavy of a house are you comfortable and skilled enough to move? Do you have a vehicle that is built to move something this big and this heavy? Because tiny houses are heavier than RVs of the same size because they're framed like a foundation built house. And so that's heavy and you've got cabinets, kitchen cupboards, appliances, all of your stuff in here, your furniture, all of those things factor into the weight of the tiny house and therefore you need a vehicle that can handle it and you also need the experience and the skills to move something like this around. So um, if it's something that you plan on moving yourself, just be realistic about how much you can handle and how much your vehicle can handle before you build a tiny house. It can be expensive to hire a mover to move your tiny house, uh, especially if you do it on a regular basis. For me, serendipity is not going to be moved that often. Uh, I had her moved here when after she was built almost two years ago and then I plan to move to BC either to the island or the interior. I'm not sure yet where she's going to end up. She may move once or twice uh, while I'm there. I don't anticipate that she's going to move a whole lot. If, if this house moves six times in my lifetime, uh, I'll be surprised because the goal was never to uh, have a home that I moved on a regular basis. I certainly, if that was my goal, I certainly would never have built a house this size. I would have definitely kept to mm, probably under 20, 20, five feet at the most, um, something quite a bit smaller. Definitely still a gooseneck, but something quite a bit smaller. And definitely I would not have gone nine and a half feet wide. I would have stayed at eight and a half feet because I, it would have been something that I would have wanted to move myself versus hiring somebody. And <laughs> I have a Toyota Echo. So obviously this isn't something that was actually gonna happen for me. But if it was a dream of mine, 
to build a tiny house and travel around North America with it. Um, not only would I have bought a truck that could pull it uh, and learned how to uh, pull something behind it, I certainly wouldn't have gone this wide. I wouldn't have gone this long. Uh, so it wasn't this heavy. Definitely something small and mobile and easy to move around would have been a priority for me. So just think about that when you are deciding on the size of your tiny house. All right, that is the video. I hope it was helpful. You know, there's a lot of considerations when you're deciding on the size of your tiny house. A lot of questions to ask yourself and to really be um, honest with yourself about because it's not something that you can change easily. And these decisions that you're making before you decide on the size of your tiny house are not ones that you can change after. Um, and you want to build a house that's right for you and think about you know, your future goals and your future needs when you're deciding on that. I hope you're doing well. Don't forget to check out the other channel, a little bit about a lot of things. That's where I am doing recipes, product reviews, just sort of more lifestyle stuff. A little bit of a little bit of a lot of things just uh, fun stuff and I'm gonna link that down below it'd be awesome if you'd go over there and check it out don't forget to subscribe if you do if you like it and don't forget to subscribe to this channel because that really helps the channel grow if you want to do anything to help me and this channel it would be that subscribe give it a thumbs up uh, a like and a share and I will see you next Sunday